Hello everybody and welcome to Earth Magic Brynna. During this last week I, I took a couple of days off work and went dowsing. I was looking to follow the Templar line out towards the uh, Polish border and extend my knowledge of where that line goes. I found it. I found several lines in fact and to trying to determine which one was which will keep me busy for another couple of dowsing trips I'm sure so I'm not ready yet to say where the line goes, whether it goes to Hostine or not. But on the way, I came across a very special spot, and I wrote a piece for my substack, The Magical World of G. Michael Vasey, please do consider subscribing, called Spirit of the Place, Sensing Something Special. And I thought that perhaps what I'd do was make a quick video on what I discovered, because what I discovered was a monument to St. Anne, placed by the side of a remote dirt road, essentially in the middle of nowhere. And beside the monument was a tree, a rather special tree, as it turned out. So what was going on was I was mapping and following a pair of 90 pace wide earth energy lines, an alignment, if you will. But as I approached this roadside monument, I found another alignment crossing the one that I was following, more or less at 90 degrees. The new alignment's pair of lines also crossed, i.e. they went like this, by the monument, at the tree actually, forming a vortex of very, very detectable energy to anyone with a bit of sensitivity to such things. So I spent a while following each of the lines a distance into the forest on the one side and a field on the other to confirm that I'd got the arrangement of the lines correct. And then I went to the tree, as this is where my rods were indicating the lines crossed. It was also where this marvellous positive energy appeared to be coming from. To my utter amazement, at the foot of the tree, I discovered three or four hearts made by arranging white quartz pebbles. One had even a plastic flower head within it. I then noticed a small sign attached to the tree, reading Chrannenni Strom, excuse my poor Czech, or in English, Protected Tree. Now why should this small little tree, next to this statue of St Anne, be a protected tree? Why was this small nondescript tree something that somebody had gone to the effort of arranging white quartz pebbles in this way? And by the way, they must have had to pick these white quartz pebbles out so it had taken them some time because they're not native to that area. Did they know that two major earth energy lines crossed there? Or had they too picked up on the marvellous energies, the spirit of the place, and felt compelled to leave some sign, some mark of respect for these energies? And why was this large Baroque statue to St Anne erected in the middle of nowhere by the side of a dirt road. Very puzzling. So I did quite a lot of searching on Google and it brought up just a few sort of locational references, maps and, and places to visit, that kind of thing, about this St Anne statue, but not much else in terms of why it was there, what its history was, when it was placed there, that kind of thing. I did find a mention of it in a Czech magazine called Reflex. That's a sort of fussy sort of publication that deals with celebrity and sensation and not something I would consider to be reliable. But it did say that the statue was erected by one Jan Tomas Tika of Holeshova in around 1740 to commemorate his escape from a murder plot hatched by his young third wife. She apparently hired assassins to waylay him at the very spot on the day before St Anne's Day. The plot failed, the assassins were killed, and the young wife saw no inheritance money and the inside of a prison cell. It's a nice story, you know, but for me it rings false. But who knows, maybe it's true. The thing is, is that in the last couple of years, as I've been travelling around the Czech Republic and parts of the UK and parts of Southern Europe, dowsing, I've encountered all kinds of similar memorials, crosses and other designs and motifs left in places where earth, where earth energy lines cross. There's a pattern here that's just too strong and too consistent to be coincidence. 
Sometimes the design that people leave at these places is a magnificent Templar church or cathedral, a circle of standing stones or even a single standing stone. Sometimes it's just a simple cross. Sometimes it's a pile of stones or flowers or candles or other items left there by people that felt the need to register the spirit of the place. I think the answer is that even though most people are unaware of earth energies in of themselves, unaware of vortices and energy lines, they naturally sense something. It seems to be an unconscious sense of something special about the spirit of a place, and they feel compelled to return, to rest, to pray or to meditate at this special and beautiful place. And this shows me that humans have an extra sense, no matter how deeply buried and rusty it might be. Their antennae pick up these spots and they feel something extraordinary there. Others like me seek out these places, knowing full well that they exist. Groups like the Templars, the early Slavs, and even earlier groups of humanity also sought out these places of energy and devised means to accentuate and amplify them through architecture, sacred geometry, the use of sound and music and chanting, and a sense of reverence. And I think that meeting this place on my travels, the remoteness of it, the middle of nowhere, and the very real sense that somebody took the time to make these hearts in white quartz stones shows me that we still are aware of these sites of energetic importance and deep inside of us we yearn to know how to use them more effectively. And we could learn by looking back to how our ancestors used these places. And we could also look to the work that Rory Duff is doing in terms of gathering groups to meditate at these places of power at specific times of the year when the meditational experience is enhanced and you can send love into the weird web that these energy lines form. And I guess that's why I'm doing what I do, wandering around the Czech Republic, getting funny looks, talking to people in broken Czech, telling them what I'm doing, and hoping that they too take an interest. Thanks for being interested in my channel. Please do like, share and subscribe. And also maybe look at my substack, The Magical World of G. Michael Vesey. Thanks a lot. Bye.